visible. Okay. So this is the first problem of division two, and we are going to discuss five problems from division today's division two and four problems from today's division one. So this is the first problem of division two. So in this problem, the there is nothing but just like we are given n different songs, and uh, I get song has some mi minutes of runtime and language li. So if the language is capital L, we can put this song into a playlist, and the playlist should have exactly k songs, and we have to find what is the maximum length of the playlist that we can achieve. So I don't think that any explanation is required. Uh, so the question is clear to everyone, right? If it's clear, we'll move to the implementation directly. Okay. So let's see the code once. So this is the code. In this, I'm taking n, k, and l as input, and I have declared a vector. In this vector, I'll only store those songs. Basically, I'll store runtimes of only those songs whose language is capital L. So I'm taking m and l as input, and if this current song's language matches my capital L, so I'll push this current songs runtime in my vector and finally i'll check if i don't have enough number of songs whose language was l i'll output minus one otherwise i can simply sort my vector and i'll take the biggest k values biggest k is runtime songs right and then i can print my answer so this is fairly straightforward is this clear to everyone is this problem clear to everyone Yes. Okay, so let's move to the second problem. So this is the second problem. So in this problem, we are given a rectangular floor of size R cross of W cross L, where W is the width and L is the length. So we have to, we can color this, like we have to, we want to use some tiles for this floor and uh, each of the tiles should be rectangular and we can use one or more tiles. And uh, so each of the tiles, like any two tiles shouldn't overlap and the floor should be completely covered with some tiles. And basically the art, like the perimeter of these tiles shouldn't be divisible by four. Yep, here it is. So let's see. Yeah, so in this problem, we are given a W cross L floor and we have to use some tiles to cover this floor and the perimeter, like taking this tile, like this tile is this thing. So the perimeter of this tile, basically let's call this L and W dash. So L dash plus W dash multiplied by two shouldn't be divisible by four for each of the tiles. And we have to output whether it's possible or not. So I think majority of the people solved this problem by just looking at the test cases, test cases and they saw that, okay, if L percentage two, this L is equals, like if this is maybe L is odd and W is also odd, then answer is no, otherwise answer is yes. But like this is, pretty obvious by looking at those test cases, right? But what is the proof of this thing? Why the answer is no only when 
L is also odd and W is also odd. And why otherwise answer is always possible. See, we want this thing for each of the tiles. We want this thing, basically the perimeter to not to be divisible by four, but we already have a two here, right? For it, there's a two in the formula itself. Two comes in the formula while we are calculating the perimeter. So basically we are narrowed down to that L, L dash plus W dash for each of the tiles, the length and width shouldn't be divisible by two. This shouldn't be divisible by two, right? Because already a two comes in the formula. So now what does this mean? That this means if L is even, W should be odd, right? W should be odd. And if L is odd, then W should be even. Then only we'll get the sum of these two as even. Otherwise, if both are odd or both are even, the sum will eventually be even and it will be divisible by two, right? So if one is even and one is odd, what is the area of this type? Like one is going to be even and other one is going to be odd, right? So what is the area of this style? It's even. Is it clear? Like I'm talking about a single tile right now. We have like, we definitely know that either the length or the width is going to be even. So if either of these is even, the area, area of this style, it's length into width. It's also even, definitely even because there's a two, right? There's a factor of two in either the length or the width. So the, eventually the area will turn out to be even. So I had this floor and I had to use some tiles. Let's say that I use these kinds of tiles. These are the tiles that I use. Each of these is even, right? Each of these areas are even. So what is even? I'm using some tiles. Let's say I'm using K tiles and each of the areas of individual tiles is even. So what is the total area that I'm able to cover? It's always even. So this means that I'll never be able to cover a floor which has an odd area, right? Am I clear till now? Okay, this makes sense, right? So I'm ne never able to cover, I'll never be able to cover a floor area which is odd. So this means if my L, my length of the floor, and my width of the floor, if these two were even, this means my L times W, the area will also be like if L and W both were odd. If both of these were odd, my L times W will be, the final area will be odd. So this means if in case when both are odd, my final area will turn out to be odd. And since I have tiles only which have even area. I will never be able to cover this floor area using the tiles which are even, whose area is even. So is this clear? This makes sense, right? And in the test, like majority of the people solve this problem by like just looking, okay, I have double L and W. I should just check that, okay, both of these are odd. If both of these are odd, answer is no, otherwise it's yes. But now it makes sense, right? Why the answer is no? when L and W were odd. So this is the proof. So if any one of you have any doubt regarding this problem, you can ask me right now. Otherwise we'll move to the code. Like the code is fairly simple. Okay, please don't end out. I'm not gonna repeat myself. Please don't end out, okay? So is anyone having any doubt? Okay, let's move to the implementation part. Yeah, the implementation is fairly simple. You take X and Y, X and Y are nothing but L and W. So you take these as input and you just check if both of these turn out to be odd. This is nothing but if this is also odd and the Y is also odd. So in that case only the answer is no because the final area of your floor is odd. So in that case, only your answer is no, otherwise your answer is yes. So now let's move to the third problem. Okay. So in this problem, it's 
in this problem we are, we are given n stones and we have k different colors so if we didn't have any condition we could color each of these n stones with k colors and the total number of ways of coloring these stones would have been k to the power n because for each stone we have k options now there is a condition that each of the stones that occur within k distance they should have different colors so what is the what is the number of ways that we can color these n stones and we have to output our answer modulo 10 to the power 9 okay so let's say we had n stones so initially when we didn't have any condition we had k colors right so for each of these stones we had k options so our answer in that case would have been simply k to the power n if we had n stones so now but we are say, saying that okay let's say k was 3 so for all of these three stones they should have different colors then next for all of these three stones color should be different and this continue from all the way till n so now let's see if if n is 1 then my answer would be simply k right i have only one stone and i can color it in k ways but now let's say i have n more than one so what i can do let's say okay this is k how many options are available like here i have k options how many options will be available to me for this stone it will be k minus 1 why k minus 1 because i have used one of the colors here right so here i have i have k minus 1 options here i will have k minus 2 options and for this this stone i will have one one option why because the length this is k right so now let's look okay this this makes sense like, like this, this is pretty obvious but let's talk about this stone how many options do i have for this stone one yep it's one why because again for this thing k minus 1 colors have already been used so i have only one option for, so for all of these stones i will have only one option so what is the answer it's just k factorial or maybe there is a case when my k is more than my n so in that case my answer would be k minus 1 like k times k minus 1 then k minus 2 all the way till k minus maybe let's say it was n minus 1 so basically i have to multiply my k for like k into k minus 1 into k minus 2 these are the number of options and i have to go till n or whichever is smaller n or k this makes sense right okay so some of you are asking me to repeat myself okay let's okay in case you don't understand that there is a possibility that sometimes i'll miss what are you writing like the things that you are writing in the chat so i'll i really suggest you that instead of writing in the chat you can like unmute yourself and let me know at that point okay so i had n stones and i am saying that okay i'll use k i have k colors and all the stones that are that that are not more than k distance apart from each other they should be having different colors so let's look at first k stones so the options available to me for the first stone is k then for the second stone is k minus 1 why k minus 1 because i have already used one of the colors i had k options for this because no none of the colors was used so far but since for the first stone i would have used one of the colors so for the second stone i have one less color available to me so it's k minus 1 so this way till this position i will have one it's k minus 2 these are the options available to me so why one here because the total length from here to here it's k so now let's look at the stone 
how many options this has available. This is also one option available because if I look at this, this part, I have already used K minus one colors here, right? So that's why all the stones that are occurring after this will have one option. So that that's why my answer is K times K minus one all the way till one or in this is the case when K is less than N. And when K is more than or equals to N, then I have to stop at K times K minus one at K minus N minus one, right? I have to stop because after that, I don't have any stones. So what's the point of like multiplying the number of options of coloring? So this makes sense now, right? So if it's okay, I'll move to the code, right? I'll move to the implementation. Okay, so this is the implementation. I've taken N and K as my input. Okay, yeah. I've taken N and K as my input and it's equal to one. I have simply output, like I've printed K and I've continued, like went to the next test next case. Otherwise, I have taken my answer as one and from I is equal to zero to minimum of N comma K. I'm multiplying my answer with Z and Z is nothing but for the first time, for the first iteration, it was K. Then for the all the consecutive next iterations, my Z will keep keep gets like it's keep it keeps getting decreased so i'm multiplying my z like my answer with my z and finally i'll print the answer value so is this okay with everyone yes okay so let's move to the fourth problem no no uh, yeah, yo, actually your voice is breaking. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Am I audible? Yep. Uh, I wanted to just ask in the previous to previous uh, that problem, um, that uh, music music problem. Which like okay yeah. Yeah, Dofi play. Uh, I just wanted to ask that. Uh, what is the distinct mean all the gay song in the playlist should be distinct so what is the meaning of the sentence means i got the solution but what is that means exactly every song in the should be right. it does not make any sense in the question i think so actually where it, where is this mentioned that the all the songs should be distinct okay there should be k songs yeah actually it doesn't make sense like it's just for the sake that okay you are not using a song twice. It just no, but no, but um, they are means like in what case means the language they have to become the song of the same languages, right? Like if you're given a song which has some X minutes and its language is L, maybe you could put this song twice in your playlist, right? So yeah, it's no, that. no, no. That, uh, that was uh, what I implemented and it got rejected. And yes. the next time I took, yeah, that's, uh, why I took a vector. that's why it's distinct. You cannot use a song twice. No, no. I took a set and then uh, I took a set, set and then you cannot, use a set. you cannot use a set. A set okay. will have only distinct values of uh, with respect to run times. A okay, two yeah. sets can have same run times, right? Yeah, yeah. But you cannot use a song twice. Okay, okay. Got you, got you. Thank you. Yeah, it's okay. So now let's look at this problem. So this problem, in this problem, we are it's given to us that we have n boxes, and each of these boxes have contain AI candies. So okay, so we have to create some groups. And a group is a collection of K candies. And no two groups can have the same, like no two candies have same color. And each group can have a candy of, like one color candy should be at max, the count of one, like a colored candy should be at, at max once. There should be no two same color candies in a same group, I think. Yep. So, 
what we have to find how what is the maximum number of groups that we can have so in this problem we had some candies right let's say we had three red colored candies uh, let's say seven yeah, green color candies and five blue color candies then we are said that then we are asked that okay we need to have a group which will have which needs to have two candy candies so how many groups can we have so we can take first a group which has a green candy and a red candy then now this is six and this is two like the number of candies that is remained with me then we can have another green and red and then again green and red so now this is finally this is four and this is zero now the number of red candies so then i'll have maybe blue green and this will be four times so total number of groups i can have is seven right so is the problem statement clear to everyone what is asked to me it's clear right so what we can do is let's see okay let's say that i'm trying okay if i have some x candies of a color i can either use these x candies these are my current different groups this is my group 1 this is my group 2 3 4 5 and 6 and this first group should have k candies this second group should have k candies for all of these groups i should have i should have k candies right so this x can either like if i have x candies i can either use this candy in each of these group ones i can put i cannot use this x like this this black colored candy let's say this was black colored twice in a group right i can only use this once so now let's see if i have if i'm checking that okay i can make some let's say x groups or not so these are my x groups so for it being like for checking that whether it's possible for me to have x groups or not i need to using all the candies available to me i should have these all of these x group i should have k candies in all of these x groups right so for doing this what i can do is suppose i had all of the number of candies of different like different colored candies in my vector a right so let's let's maybe like like let, let's just simply first sort it in non -de non decreasing order that means in descending order like this value is 10 this value is 10 this value is 9 6 5 1 this is non decrease this is non increasing order not non decreasing order this is in descending order right excuse me yep can you take the last test cases and solve with that okay like 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 let me first explain the approach okay so this is k so now what i can do is this 10 can be put like i have five groups right so i can put this this candy since i have 10 counts of this candy i can put one in each of these groups then again i have 10 so i can put this next candy also in each of these groups then i have nine so simply i'll put the same thing but when i have when i come to five so i have five candies so i'll put one in each of these groups and i'll come to this position only i cannot put anything here for the next i can put one right this candy i'll put here or maybe if i had two i can put one here and next will come one here so this way i can check okay what is the value that each of these groups were filled with like what is the value for which what is the like 
I can see like okay, maybe three or four candies were in each of these groups. So if I am creating x x groups, I will have four candies at least in my each of the groups. So in that case, I can simply check if four is more than or equals to k. K is nothing but the number of candies that should be in each of the groups. So if four is more than equals to k, I can create x groups. So this makes sense, right? And one more thing. So if I'm able to create x groups, I will definitely be able to create x minus one groups, right? Anything less than x, I can create those groups. So this is nothing but the question is having monotonicity. This means I can use binary search. The function is non-decreasing. So I can use binary search. So simply I'll binary search on x. X is nothing but can I have, can I simply have uh, X groups or not? And as I explained for checking X groups, what needs to be done? So I'll simply check if X groups are possible or not. And once X groups are possible, I'll simply initialize my answer as X and uh, move my left boundary, maybe low to answer plus, mid plus one, maybe X plus one, let's call this X plus one. And otherwise I'll simply do high is equals to since my X groups are not possible. I'll initialize my right boundary X as X minus one. So now let's look at this using one test case. So the test case is five, three, six, nine, four, two, one, six, nine, four, two, one. So if we sort this, we get it. Like nine, six, four, two, one. So then I'm like, I'm not gonna apply by like, I'm applying binary search from zero to 10 to the power 18. But during dry run, I'm not gonna apply binary search from in this range. I'll simply apply binary search from zero to nine, right? So let's say, okay. Mid is currently for zero to nine, my mid will be why you are applying uh, for 0 to, to 10 to the power 18? That's the maximum number of groups I can have. How you came to this conclusion? Because a value of a is 10 to the power 9 and n is 10 to 1 to 10. You can also do n into maximum of a of i. But I'm just doing it 10 to the power 18 because I'm not careful. Anyway, if you have an, like r as 10 to the power 15, your operations will be around 40 or something. And if you're 10 to the power 18, you'll have bin like binary search operation that will be around 60. So if your solution is passing for n into 30, 40, it will also pass for n into 60. So that's why I'm using, like you can keep any value that is more than n into 10 maximum of a of i, okay? okay. So now, like we can just check. Okay, for maybe four. So for four, I, I have four groups. Let's check for directly for six. No, four, four. Let's check for six. I have six groups. And these were my sorted values. So for first, like first candy was, first color candy was, like the count of first color candy was nine. So I'll put this candy in each of my groups. Then next was six. Next is four, right? So I can only put up till here. Next is two. And the next one is one. So I can see that each of my groups have at least three candies. So in this case, what was K for this test case? It was, it was three. It K was three. So as I can see this K, like K is more than K is less than or equals to three. So that's why it's possible for six. Now let's check for seven. If when I have seven groups, like for any of the values that is less than, like for all the values that are less than six for groups less than six, this will always be true, right? So now let's just check for seven when I have seven groups. So first was nine. So I can put this candy in each one of the groups. Next is six. So I'll be able to put this candy in only first six groups. 
next was four then two and one so four so for like better explanation i can do one thing like let's say my first candy was red colored so i'm using like all of these seven groups have red this red colored candy then my next color like i had six candies of purple color so now then next i had i had four two and one so i had four candies of blue color then i had some two candies of yellow color and then finally i had one candy of green color so in this case there is one group left which has two only two candies so two is k less than or equals to two no so for seven this turns out to be false is it clear now yeah okay. yeah let's move to the like so this is the implementation this is nothing but i have sorted my array and then i have just taken like uh, low and high and i'm applying binary search my low is less than high i am taking the mid if it's possible we'll see what what is happening possible function in the, like in a bit so if it's possible then my answer is it, like mid is possible is one of the possible answers and i'll shift my lower boundary to mid plus 1 otherwise i'll shift my higher boundary to mid minus 1 and then in my possible function i'm just taking okay what are the total number of candies that are at least post like available to me in each of the groups and this got is nothing but like it's for implementation so if my currently like this currently i have this got is nothing but got will give me where i am currently on which group i am currently so if got is zero that means for the current current iteration this when i am iterating for this third time currently my like zero means none of the groups have any candies so basically if got is zero and i have more than x candies i am checking for x then i'll simply in, in, increment my x total that all the groups will have at least one more candy and otherwise i'll and i'll continue otherwise all these like got will be increased by a of i and i'll continue otherwise if got is not zero so i'll simply increment my a of i and now if got is more than x that is if got is not is more than the number of groups that i was trying to create so got will be decreased by x and my total will increase and finally i'm checking okay return if total is more than or equals to k or not so is this clear okay it's clear so now let's move to the excuse me yeah i was uh, solving this problem using priority queue so can i solve with that means i was checking if the uh, priority queue size is greater than equal to k i will keep uh, taking uh, take out the elements and i will minus 1 and again input into the queue again okay if okay. doing like priority queue and you are decreasing probably it will give tle yes even if, if even if the logic is correct i'm not sure whether the logic is correct or not but if you are doing minus one each time it will give okay yeah. now let's move to the move to the fifth problem so in this problem the beauty is defined as like pairwise product of each of the elements so we are given some key operations in each each of the operations we can increment any value of like if any one of you please don't be shy of asking questions all right you can ask me questions when i'm currently on that problem like unmute yourself and ask questions when i'm currently like uh, don't wait for me to move to another problem or maybe when every like i have explained everything just ask me question then and there so in this problem we beauty is defined as for an array a it's defined as multiplication pay wise multiply product of elements of the array and we have k operations and what we can do in each of the operations that we can increment any element of i any any element of the array a and we have to output our result like the final beauty that we can achieve maximum beauty modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7 so let's look at the math behind this problem Okay. 
So let's say we had an array. Okay, let's first look at two numbers. Suppose I give you x and y, and I can I say that you can you have k operations, and in each of these k operations, you can either increment x or you can increment y. And what is the maximum product of that you can achieve of x and y? So what do you think it will be? Infinite. Like okay, okay. So let's say we divide k in x and y. So maybe we give x alpha, and we give y k minus alpha. Basically, x will be become x plus alpha, and y will become y plus k minus alpha. So if we, now the product will be x times x plus alpha. Y plus k minus alpha. So in this equation, we have we, x is known, y is known, k is known. Only unknown is alpha. So this is nothing but a second degree equation. This is a quadratic equation. So if we differentiate this once, we'll get the maximum value of which, like, what is the maximum value where this equation arrive? It gives me what is the maximum value. Basically, if there is a function like this, this is a secondary, like a quadratic equation. This is the function. So I can get what is the maximum value. And at this point, the differentiation of this function is zero. That's why if I differentiate my equation once, I'll get, and I put like put this equals to zero, I'll get my value of alpha. But eventually you'll find that it's always optimal to break my k in such a way among x and y that x plus alpha is equals to y plus k minus alpha. Like this value should be equal. Then at that point, I get maximum. So this is just for two numbers. Now let's look at, and let's don't get confused in this part. This is just like, I'm just explaining for two numbers. I have a better explanation for this problem. Like I'll, it will help you to visualize better. So, we had n numbers, right? So just bear with me for two minutes. We had n numbers and let's say I have sorted my array. I have sorted my array. So let's say I had something here, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and one more. Let's say eta. I have only five elements. I'm only looking at my array size was five and these values are sorted. So now Let's say I had one operation. So my initial beauty would be initial beauty was all of these numbers multiplied like alpha times alpha times beta and then okay, let's alpha times beta then plus alpha times comma plus alpha times delta plus alpha times eta right and this way all the way till delta times eta. So this was my initial beauty one. And now I have one operation in which I'll increment one of these elements. So once let's say I incremented my delta by one. So when I increment my delta by one, this, the initial beauty will remain same as it was earlier. And some things will get add to this, added to this. What is the thing that will get added to this? Can anyone tell me? What is the value that is going to, if I incremented my delta by one, what is the value that is going to be get, like is going to get added to my beauty? Alpha plus beta plus gamma. Alpha plus beta plus gamma plus eta. Like this one will get multiplied with all of the others, right? Is this making sense? If I increment my delta by one, this is the value that is going to get like this is the value that is going to get added to my beauty. So now let's see, this is the value when, when my delta was, delta was incremented. So what was the, what is the value when my alpha was incremented? It's nothing but beta plus gamma plus delta plus eta, right? So since in the initial array, my array was alpha, beta, gamma, delta, eta, and I was saying that my array is in sorted order. This is non-decreasing order. This is sorted in ascending order. So can I say that this is true? 
that these values are right yes so now let's look at once again look at what were the values that i got let's quickly write these values when i incremented alpha i got beta plus gamma plus delta plus eta when i incremented my beta i got alpha plus alpha alpha beta gamma delta and eta so when i'm incrementing these values what i'm getting alpha plus gamma plus delta plus eta alpha plus gamma plus beta plus eta no not gamma alpha plus beta plus delta plus eta alpha plus beta plus gamma plus eta and alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta so which of these five values is now maximum these are the values that are going to get added to my final beauty so what do you think that which of these values is now maximum first this first one first one is the maximum so now it's it's clear that if i have my array sorted it's and i had one operation it's always better to increment my lowest value by one why because all of my rest of the elements that are in my array will get multiplied by one extra value so their sum will get added to my beauty this makes sense right is it clear till now yes okay so now let's look at the case when i had k more than 1 so let's look at this greedily so first i had k something like okay i had k 10 to the power 5 let's forget that i had k 10 to the power 5 let's look greedily and let's look at only one option because i'm not going to apply all the 10 to the power 5 operations at once right i'm going to apply all these operations one by one so let's look okay what is the one operation that i should apply that my array beauty should increase by maximum so i'll apply on my, this element so let's say i had 5 maybe 5 6 7 8 and i had five operations five operation so after applying first operation my array will become 6 6 7 8 then again i'll apply my, my operation at the lowest element so my array will become 7 6 7 8 now keep in mind now this is no more the lowest element i have to apply my operations to this so now let's summarize all of these things that we have seen till now let's say these are the like this is the amount of values that this is nothing like th this means that i have 3 here this means i have 4 here this means that i have 8 and this meant that i had something like maybe around 9 so maybe again i had 9 so i have k operations right so what i'll do each time i'll pick the lowest element and i'll increment it so this means nothing but i'm trying to fill these values okay so if i had k is something like 5 so for 5 i'll try to see okay i'll try to make these two values up to this point and then for all like now i have only two maybe only one operation left i'll apply on this thing but apart than that all the values i'll try to make all of the lowest values as max as possible right that's what i'm doing i'm trying to get my lowest value which is in my array as maximum as possible so then you now you can implement it in many ways i've told you the approach you have to just do for the array which is given to you sort it and try to get the lowest value which is in the array as max as possible so you can use priority queue like if you can implement this using priority queue it's fine but i have implemented it without use of priority queue so let's look at how i have done it okay so i have sorted my array and my initial value like this underscore val gives me my lowest value so what i am trying to do from first index i'll see okay i am trying to get all the previous values like the values which occurred before i to a to value ai so i'll check okay ai times i this is nothing but ai multiplied by i minus the values which occurred previously if this is more than k that means that i cannot make all the previous values equals to 
this value AI. That's why I'll simply break. Otherwise, I'll add this current AI to my value and then I'll again check for the further next I. That can I make my this AI like all the previous values that occurred to this previous like before this I can I make all the those values equal to AI. And if it's still true, I'll continue. Otherwise, I'll break. So the position where my I breaks, either it's N. If it's N, it means that my all the values can be equals to the last value. Like the array is sorted in non-decreasing order. So all my values can be equals to N. And after that also, maybe I'll have some operations left. Maybe my K is so large. But first, I'll try to do, okay, till where my I is stopped, I'll make all those values equals to J is going from 0 to I. I'll make all those values equal to A of I. Now here, keep in mind, I'm doing A minimum of I comma N because there is a possibility that the, like this will go more than n. Maybe this should be n minus one, not n. Right? La last index. So k minus the operations required to make the jth element equals to this, and uh, then aj is equals to this. So once this is done, I have utilized my operations, like all the operations for making the first maybe j, maybe i elements equals to the aith element. Now. I have some operations left, so I can greedily just simply use those operations to equally distribute among all those remaining. Like definitely I won't have operations more than I, because if I would have more than I operations, I, I would have simply increased my value once. Or maybe I can have I operations more than I operations, but I don't have that many operations that all of the I elements that are available to me will be, can somehow be equal to AI plus one, right? So this is nothing but. I have K operations left. I'm decreasing my value here, right? So I have K operations left. I'm dividing by the number of elements left to me and I'll increment my current element with simply X. Once everything is done, I'll simply, simply calculate my beauty. How I'm like, uh, I'm calculating the sum of each of the elements available to me for now, then I'm iterating through my array. I'll decrease my sum with current element and I'll multiply my sum with E and add to my val. Val is nothing but answer here. Let's say that this is answer. So now since we have proved that this is the best answer that we can get, that this is the maximum beauty, right? So is it clear to now? You should try to like solve this problem with your, maybe yourself and try to do all these calculations with pen and paper. Then, then you'll get a better feel of all the things that are happening. But is it clear? So there's only math involved. Uh, like, can you repeat yourself? I didn't understand. Only, only math is there. Yup, yup, yup. Only math is there. Like majority of the problems uh, today were only math. All the problems were math only. In today's code forces, in today's code share. But is it clear to everyone? Oh, can you go through like the explanation part again? Can I go through the lock? Which part? Uh, the explanation, like, like after we identify that uh, performing the operations on the minimum element is this, I don't understand what happened after. So yeah, uh, once I identified that, okay, applying the operations on the minimum element is the most optimal for each operation. So what I have to do, I keep applying for this. So you have to somehow like efficiently apply these operations to make, like you can use any approach. Maybe my approach is pretty confusing to you, but yeah, what you have to do is, each time you get the lowest element, you have to increment it by one. Now, how like I have done it in a way that I'm going from in this after sorting, I'm going in this direction. I'm trying to like get all of these elements first to this element. Like if my eye is here, I'm trying all of these elements to get to like if all of these elements can be made after some operations equal to this element. So if it, this is possible, fine. I'll check for the next eye. Otherwise, okay, this is not possible. So I'll just stop here. I'll make these elements equal to this element. And then if I have some operations left, I am trying to best fit those operations in my vector or array. 
basically yeah. the elements which appeared in front of the eye so is it clear yes yes okay so i think we can stop now hopefully this session was helpful to you bye